Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome to From the Depths, the Dev Test Branch. Uh, Dev Test 2.5.0.7. Yep, 7. That's not a 1, that's a 7. I can read my own handwriting. And I wasn't originally going to make a video uh, on what's in the Dev Test right now, mostly because it's primarily the same kind of stuff that's in the APS update that I talked about previously. Basi uh, basically, in the video I cover about the in the APS test branch, all the stuff different there. It's mostly that. So, APS is going to be more expensive, slower firing, but uh, better stacking of uh, chemical rounds, kinetic is going to get nerfed, railgun differences, etc, etc. So I thought like, okay, there's not much point covering dev tests because it's mostly that again. But! I couldn't stay away from Dev Test for long because it's so fun and interesting, and that's not the only change. And if you haven't stuck your head into Dev Test in recent days, uh, treat yourself because it's actually quite interesting and there's a nice preview of what's coming next. So, first things first, you'll notice that I currently have an aircraft uh, flying around over Marauder, and this aircraft is notable for two reasons. Firstly, I finally managed to get aerial AI working the way I wanted to, and by that I mean uh, the bombing AI function, which uh, is way easier than it has been in days gone by. But more importantly, well, you can hear right now one of the things is new sounds, jets have new sounds, is new custom jets. So, one meter by one meter custom jets, not counting all the attachments you stick on them to make them work. So, these are can be found in the air section, in the custom jet section. They're quite a bit cheaper than, well, they're one-third the cost of uh, large, regular custom jets, apart from all the uh, intakes and stuff, the intakes, compressors, injectors, combustors, stuff like that. And, yeah, so they're, they're pretty much like this, except smaller. And you'll notice that uh, this little craft right here, this uh, bomber, which is not a great bomber, by the way, runs on RTGs, made of wood, uh, crap, crap, yeah, crappy little bombs, it has a little jet engine on the back here to make it fly faster, because if it doesn't have that, it's not very fast at all. So, when I first made this, I was kind of wondering, well, what's the point of 1x1 uh, one one custom jets, then? They don't really make uh, things go really fast. And then I remembered that these things don't use uh, engine power at all, they just consume fuel, so... If you want to have uh, more thrust on the back of something, and if you happen to have the room for it, like you can stick a few of these things on. And because it takes up so much less space than, uh, well, a regular custom jet, which is really big, it means you can kind of fit them in a lot more easily, and that's that's very nice. I like that. So, and it's also great if you want to make smaller aircraft that don't have engine power at all, because that's entirely possible. You can have uh, those of you in the audience who that know how to make jets, and like proper planes and stuff. I envy you, by the way, I never get around to learning that. Um, yeah, it's, this is going to make planes a little bit easier to make, particularly small ones, and hopefully there's room in front of the devs for small stuff like that. Like, I've noticed that small craft tend to uh, completely dodge radar-guided missiles, simply because small things have a much lower radar signature, but I'm getting off topic, so. We have these custom jets, they're very simple to set up, it's just, yeah, same as the large ones, air intake, controller, compressor, combustors, I have a lot of combustors on here because that seems to help, exhaust, extra combustors, extra compressors, and an injector. Just one, only really need one. And yeah, you already, you, you would already have noticed that uh, there's new sounds, new jet sounds, new missile sounds. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So, here we have the Marauder, our favorite thing. And one thing you'll notice right here is God Mode. Turn God Mode on or off this vehicle. When on, no damage will be processed. Okay, so let's test that right now. So, what something... I need something that dishes out a lot of hurt very quickly. Okay, so Artstruck, thing with big crams on it. Is it going to kill this Marauder? Nope. Because this Marauder is truly invulnerable. Actually, what the hell? Wow, the Marauder really is the strongest craft in nature. The Artstruck just hit, hurt itself. 
But yeah, so this is what that does. It just, it's designer only, naturally. And it just means that uh, for testing purposes, and so you don't have to worry about your target dummy shooting at you and destroying uh, all your stuff and making your life miserable, you can turn this on. This is such a good feature. I love that so much. To the point where, when I'm out of dev test uh, doing other things, I keep going to click on this and think like, oh wait, why is that not there? Oh yeah, it's not actually in the base game yet. So, yeah, that's a fantastic feature. That's really good. Well done to whoever came up with that and whoever implemented that. Where are we? We Marauder. Marauder Marauder. Doo -doo. And so, more sound. So the custom jets, they have that kind of uh, jet engine sound right now, which is very nice. And what else? What else? Missiles also. Ooh, yeah. Let's uh, turn God Mode on the Marauder again. Let's spawn in something with a whole butt-ton of missiles. Do, do, do. Do, 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 where are we? We are here, here, and we'll spawn in the Lechwan, because the Lechwan has a lot of missiles. Listening. Let's listen to this. It's that poop of launch, and then that zoom. There we go. Might have to turn your volume up to hear that. Conveniently, it also means that your targets uh, don't die before you want them to. That ching ching of reloading, that's very nice, I like that. Sounds loverly, so get out of here and you die quickly. And let's now spawn in. The thing I actually wanted to spawn in before. And here, test fortresses. Two five test fortress. Yeah. So when you place turrets as well. Oh god. I forgot about that. That was close. Come on, there we go. Whoopsie daisy. So, when you place turrets now, they make a cool sound. So, you go here, place a turret. People wanted the sound effects that you hear in the new From the Devs trailer, and by gum, here it is. But yeah, on to the APS sound. So, APS, the overhaul is similar to what I've covered before. You need to balance recoil, cooling, and autoloaders in order to get the best out of them. Uh, small guns, well, kinetic damage nerfed across the board. Stacking chemical shells, etc, etc, so let's turn all this off. And, spawning in our friend the Marauder, this time not on God Mode. Uh, here's what smaller gauge a gun sound like now. So this thing right here is an 18mm heat gun, and this one is a 60mm gun also using heat. And I think it sounds pretty good. I like when I first heard these tiny guns firing, I was thinking like, what? That sounds weird. But like, I don't know, it's growing on me a little bit. Is that that it kinda reminds me of a suppressed uh, pistol. How it's supposedly uh, suppressed pistols actually don't sound like this at all. It sounds like a gunshot. But yeah. Like a little firecracker going off. Just not quite as loud. But yeah, it goes. I can't do an impression of it to save my life, but yeah, so you've got the pfft and the pow right here. Let's turn that off. Now we've got, uh, what do we have here? We have a 120mm gun and a 236mm gun. Medium gauge, uh, the consistent consensus seems to be that this is the best sounding uh, guns of the bunch because they sound like this. Good solid bang and boom. Future me, remember to edit the sound so you can actually hear these gun sounds. My one complaint with these gun sounds is that actually they sound, they're not loud enough. They sound kind of muffled. I know, especially compared to a lot of other sounds in the game. But yeah, sounds pretty good. Oh yeah, these are uh, high explosive shells they're firing. Can't get over it how even at medium gauge now high explosive is useful 
in dev test at an upcoming change. That's pretty sweet. Okay, now we get onto the bigger guns, and uh, how's our Marauder doing? 88% health. Eh, we're good. So these, uh, this 402mm gun is, is a kinetic EMP shell, which is one of my favorite things to use. Yes, I know even in the upcoming update it's not going to be particularly great, but I can't resist, so let's have a go at that. Listen to that. This has a pretty terrible reload, it only fires about roughly five shots a minute, so... Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. Kablooey. Nice EMP jolt and all that stuff, and mostly, the most bully, it sounds like a cannon. It sounds like a big, big gun. And the generally lower fire rate of large gauge APS shells just really contributes to the fact that this is a big, big gun. Because, like, a 400mm gun in real life, like 40 centimeters, let's see, like, you could, f this is a gun that can fire, uh, shells the size of elementary school children. Don't ask me why I immediately thought of children. I guess I've just, I don't know, I have a weird mind like that. Please don't, uh, please don't, uh, think worse of me for that. But then we get onto 500mm guns, and I like the way these sound. Some people think they sound too high-pitched, but yeah, they sound like this. I like how it sounds like a thunderclap. Also, it's a little bit weird. The, the shells that this thing is firing, it's firing 8 meter long explosive shells. That does about 15,000 explosive damage, but it doesn't seem to do that much at the moment. Maybe that's a bug, maybe it's not. But yeah, it's a... Uh, Pretty sweet. Nice big bang. One more. One more. Come on. Yeah, this thing only fires about 3.6 rounds per minute, so quite slow. Quite slow indeed. Okay, you missed. We'll take that as a sign to not bother. Okay, so one last thing I wanted to show is like, uh, just with the kind of uh, changes that's going to be happening with APS, uh, some people are saying that uh, kinetic weapons are dead, and, well, you certainly can't use them the same way you could before, but they're not quite dead. Uh, if you know what you're doing, they can still be kind of scary. Where the hell's more? There it is. Okay. Okay. Playing that way, you rogue. So yeah, this is a very big silly railgun. I made. Uh, ignore all the RTGs, I just didn't feel like placing engines down to power this thing. But uh, one of the great things about this is that in the upcoming update you can stack railgun charges directly onto each other, which means that the Tetris is so much easier. It's so nice. And the great thing about uh, railguns in the dev test branch right now is because they don't use coolers at all. A pure railgun doesn't need coolers at all, which uh, makes it in... Which makes it actually quite nice, because it means you potentially you can get a really high rate of fire if you stick enough charges on them. Which is similar to how railguns theoretically, theoretically would work in real life. Uh, but the, what you lack... Okay, so it basically means you don't have to worry about coolers. You do have to worry about recoil, particularly if you're firing uh, shells like this, which is just 8 meters of solid bodies with a heavy head on the end of it, and a base bleeder on there. And this uses about 50,000... Electricity? Power? Uh, battery charge? And, yeah, well actually no, I changed it earlier. It uses about uh, 61,000, so lots of kinetic damage, lots of armor PS. This is, if you want to put a hole straight through a bulwark, uh, so it springs a leak and sinks, uh, this is the kind of thing you use. It's not actually that effective or efficient, because it just puts a nice hole through the middle of something and that's it. But if it hits a critical point, uh, it's really good. Over a thousand meters per second firing, and well, it, it, well, wasn't your best showing right there on the Marauder, but, uh, actually, yeah, 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 let's do this. I believe you can put a hole straight through a tier, and yes, I'm using the tier as a yardstick, like, I don't want to hear about how the tier is easy. Some people keep saying that, they're, well, at the very least, they're opinionated, and, well, I don't know. I don't know. Just even if you find something easy from the depths, that doesn't mean other people are also finding it easy. You might just be lucky in how your brain works. But in any case, uh, 
you can put a hole straight through a tier if you get lucky with the shields. Oh, hello. I think that did put a hole straight through it. Almost. Let's try again. I want to. I want to bust a turret. Let's go. Same right here. Come on now. Come on now. This is essentially me playing around right now. You've missed? Ah, interesting. One more. Come on. Come on. Wow, that one really did go all the way through. Ah, come on, I want to see... You know what, let's be really clever and aim down here. Uh, hello. Eh, eh. There we go! So in case you're wondering what uh, ridiculous kinetic guns are good for, you get a good volley of them, or if you just uh, sneak one of these shells inside every volley, there is a chance that you can just blow turrets off things. So yeah, that's a... Uh, yeah, critical hit, I guess. But yeah, that's basically it for this very brief dev test... Uh, demonstration? Talking about... You could make railguns like this before, by the way. It's just that uh, shields rendered them pretty much useless. And shields being bad in dev tests, because, yeah, that's the other thing with APS overhaul. Shields are not worth your time for the most part, so don't bother. These things could uh, actually be quite meta again. It's quite scary, actually. I'm not sure how to defend against that, except possibly spamming lots of stone. But in any case, uh, that does it for this quick little update. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon if you like, it really helps. Thank you to my current Patreon supporters, and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell!